The race to the moon is back on, but this time, it's not just the United States and Russia competing. Private companies like SpaceX are also in the game. So, who will be the first to put humans back on the moon? In this video, we'll take a look at two of the leading contenders, SpaceX's Starship and NASA's Space Launch System SLS. We'll compare their designs, capabilities, and development timelines, and we'll try to predict who will reach the moon first. So, who do you think will win the race to the moon? SpaceX or NASA? Let's find out. The idea of SLS was born in 2010 when Congress passed the NASA Authorization Act, a bill that directed NASA to construct a space launch system capable of lifting about 70 to 100 metric tons to low Earth orbit. This figure was later scaled up to 130 tons. Congress also wanted the rocket to be designed to lift the Orion crew vehicle, since its development was still in progress at the time. They also wanted NASA to work with existing partners of the Space Shuttle program to make the SLS a reality. At first, NASA had plans to roll out the SLS as quickly and efficiently as possible. The idea was to have the SLS operational by December 31st, 2016. However, due to a number of factors, including technical challenges and budget overruns, the SLS has been delayed numerous times. The first launch of the SLS is now scheduled for 2024. NASA uses the cost plus contracting scheme with its contractors. In short, this is a contract scheme based on the following. This is the money we'll give you to get it done, but we'll also pay for anything that goes over budget. Unfortunately, this funding system has its downsides. You see, it gives NASA contractors very little incentive to remain on schedule or on budget. Instead, delays are on the order of the day because delays usually mean that there is more money for the contractors. Now, here's the crazy thing. NASA's development for SLS has been spending about $1.5 billion of taxpayers' money every year since 2011. NASA even assured its contractors that there would be plenty of resources to make the project happen, just as long as they stayed within a realistic budget. Go figure! The main contractor for the SLS system was Boeing, receiving a majority of the payment for the entire project. Now, isn't it interesting that SpaceX has only had one-tenth of the budget but more successful flights than some of the contractors working on the Space Shuttle project? In fact, SpaceX's history with super-heavy vehicles begins with Tom Mueller, one of the company's first employees with a propulsion engineer by profession. In the mid-2000s, Mueller built a BFR rocket engine at his rocket club, the Reaction Research Society. However, the BFR vehicle didn't gain any popularity until 2012 when Elon Musk hinted that a huge rocket called the Mars Colonial Transporter would soon be one of SpaceX's major vehicles. At the time, SpaceX was still a relatively small commercial aerospace company. They had only flown the Falcon 9 three times. However, there was a lot of media buzz that the company would soon be flying its other Falcon prototypes, the Falcon Heavy, the Falcon X, and the Falcon XX rockets. Elon Musk finally revealed SpaceX's plans during the 2016 International Astronautical Congress IAC Summit held in Guadalajara, Mexico. During the conference, Musk would let the world know exactly what he was working on. Musk showed plans of a 12-meter wide, 122-meter tall, fully reusable rocket. The design consisted of six vacuum engines and 42 methane-powered combustion engines. It also boasted a 300-ton payload capacity. It was given the name Interplanetary Transportation System, or ITS for short. In 2018, the name was changed to BFR, before Musk later changed it to Starship. As you can clearly see from both histories, SLS was created as a government-incentivized program, while Starship was built as an innovative project to revolutionize space travel. And in a transformative industry like this one, innovation is everything. Now, let's look at some of the varying features between Starship and SLS. For Starship, it will stand at 118.8 meters tall, that is 390 feet, and consist of two primary parts. The Starship, which is the upper stage of the vehicle, while the second is the Super Heavy, a booster stage powered by the Raptor rocket engine. This engine burns a combination of liquid oxygen and methane to produce hot gas, which is then released at high speeds to produce about 15 million pounds of thrust at launch. This is almost twice that of rockets from the Apollo era. Let's also not forget that the Super Heavy will be powered by six Raptor engines. On the other hand, the SLS will be designed to take over from the discontinued Saturn V as NASA's most powerful rocket engine ever created. 
According to reports, the SLS will stand at about 100 meters tall, that is 328 feet. The core stage of the SLS will carry more than 3.3 million liters of liquid oxygen and hydrogen. It will be powered by RS-25 engines used in NASA's previous space shuttles. The main difference between RS-25 engines and SpaceX's Raptor engines is that they burn liquid hydrogen instead of methane. The core stage of the SLS will also feature two solid rocket boosters attached on each side, bringing the total combined thrust of the SLS to 8.2 million pounds at launch. This lift will be capable of pushing the spacecraft to Earth's lower orbit. So, what are the differences in terms of design? Well, the Starship will have small movable wings that will enable it to glide to its specific landing zone. The ship will also operate both in the vacuum of space and within the atmospheres of Mars and Earth. Once Starship is positioned over the landing area, it gets into a vertical position and uses its Raptor engines to descend. The rocket will also be designed to have sufficient thrust to lift off from the surface of the Moon and Mars to overcome the weaker gravity of other worlds and get back to Earth. The Starship and Super Heavy are both fully reusable and the entire system is designed to lift more than 100 tons of payload to the surface of the Moon or Mars. As for the SLS, the upper stage is where the rocket will lift the attached payload, including the astronaut capsule, out of Earth's orbit to the given destination. The SLS will feature the Orion crew capsule that's capable of supporting up to six crew members for about 21 days. NASA plans to use it for the Artemis 1 mission to take astronauts back to the Moon. The capsule will also have acrylic windows for astronauts to view the expanse of space as they travel to their destination. The capsule will have its own fuel supply and engine, not to mention a secondary propulsion system for returning back to Earth. Unlike the Starship, the SLS booster rockets won't be reusable, so the cost for the SLS system will be much higher than the Starship. However, it will be designed to evolve to larger stages capable of carrying crew or cargo weighing up to 120 tons, which is more cargo than what the Starship is designed to carry. Both the Starship and SLS are ambitious projects, with the potential to revolutionize space travel. However, there are some key differences between the two rockets. The Starship is a fully reusable rocket that is designed to be more cost-effective than the SLS. The SLS is a more powerful rocket that is capable of carrying heavier payloads. However, the SLS is also more expensive and less flexible than the Starship. Ultimately, the question of which rocket will go to the moon first is still up in the air. Both NASA and SpaceX are working hard to develop their respective rockets, and it is possible that both rockets will make it to the moon in the next decade. However, it is also possible that one rocket will emerge as the clear leader, and the other will be relegated to a secondary role. Only time will tell which rocket will be the first to take humans back to the moon. However, one thing is for sure, the race to the moon is back on and it is more exciting than ever. That's all for today's video, thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel for more updates and let us know in the comments below which rocket you think will be the first to take humans back to the moon.